Okay, fine. The world will get more invincible in uh, late 2023. All right, okay, I'll take it. Late 2023. Perfect, sure. So 2023, is that like one of your years? You know, our planets, they all have different systems of keeping track of time. Like, they go around their stars at different speeds, but the way you said that number makes it sound soon. Is it soon? I really want it to be soon. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie Invincible. Just released a season two teaser trailer and a teaser for Jeffrey Dean Morgan joining the show. I'll explain what's going on. There's also a live action Invincible movie that Robert Kirkman is making separately, but it's like a totally different thing. Jeffrey Dean Morgan could also be joining for that. I'll explain that as well. But the character that he's playing is meant to be the most powerful character in the series and like the main antagonist for the entire series. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing videos for all the season two episodes when it premieres, and I'll do a special giveaway for all those too. Many thanks to this week's sponsors, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is one of the biggest mobile games in the world right now that's totally free to play. To kick off the new year, they released an update with a bunch of new features, including a new season of the Forge Pass, the Plarium Points program, which allows you to earn in-game prizes, including a legendary champion and a bunch more. There's also a ton of new champions they're introducing, including Kellen the Shrike and Edna Moonbeam, who are part of a whole new faction they've introduced called the Sylvan Watchers. They just added a legendary champion based on MMA superstar Ronda Rousey with fighting moves based on her real life MMA fighting techniques. You can get Ronda for free right now. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and February 28. Use the special promo code Raid Ronda. I'll put it on screen here to get a bunch of helpful stuff. And because Raid is having its fourth anniversary later this year, they're launching a special Titan event. It'll be live for several weeks. During it, you can earn anniversary points by competing in special themed events and win some really cool rewards. For brand new players in the US, Raid's also giving away in-game and real life prizes, including a chance to win an Amazon gift card worth up to $1,000 as part of a special contest they're holding where you vote for your favorite starter champion. Go to championselect.plarium.com and enter your player ID. I'll put the link on screen here and vote for your chosen champion. The vote ends February 10th. One champion will be crowned winner and prize winners will be selected via draw. For existing players, you can also get some free stuff by going to that same link where you get a special promo code that you can use for an in-game gift. New players can use my link or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. Your rewards will be in your inbox here. So be sure to vote on your favorite starter champion for a chance to win. But in his post here, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is reading Invincible Compendium 2 and 3. There is that live action Invincible movie that Robert Kirkman teased. I said they're making. That won't happen for a couple more years. We'll get a couple more seasons of the animated show, season 2 and season 3, before that happens. Which is why I say this is mostly probably a teaser for the animated series, not for the live action movie. But he could also be playing a character in the live action movie. Like he'd make an amazing live action Omni-Man because he's about the right age. He's got the right look for it even though J.K. Simmons is amazing as the animated Omni-Man. And he can get swole like he did get swole for a Chris Pratt movie a couple of years ago, so he can get huge if he wants to. The actual teaser here that Jeffrey Dean Morgan was dropping is meant to be that he's playing the character from later in the story because Compendium 2 and 3 cover everything from issue 48 to the end of the story, and he's probably playing the main antagonist of the series. Like, he typically only plays really big characters, and he's been playing Negan on The Walking Dead, one of the overarching villains for the entire series. To make the Robert Kirkman connection, because Robert Kirkman created Invincible and he created The Walking Dead, so naturally he would go to his friends to play really big characters on Invincible. So that's why Jeffrey Dean Morgan is probably cast to play Thrag. Now, he's not totally unkillable, but he is meant to be the most powerful Viltrumite that exists. Even though Mark's name is Invincible and it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, he is functionally invincible compared to everyone else in the universe. Even though it seemed like Battle Beast was almost able to kill him, Omni-Man stopped him from doing that, that's mostly just because Mark was inexperienced, like he just wasn't a good fighter to begin with. One of the big things about Viltrumites is that really the only thing that can kill a Viltrumite is another Viltrumite and the Scourge virus, which I'll explain because that has to do with Thrag's backstory. He's the current leader of the Viltrumites, the person giving them all their marching orders as they continue to conquer the universe and replenish their race, replenish their rank, so to speak. And even though he's the ruler of their people, they do have an emperor historically. He is not the emperor, he is actually the regent. They tease a little bit about the Viltrumites' backstory of their race when Omniman was telling Mark, and then later Alan the Alien told him about it separately. 
You continue to learn more about the history of their race from other new characters that we'll meet during Season 2 and beyond. But the Viltrumites are meant to be like the Kryptonians in the Superman DC movies or the Saiyans in the Dragon Ball universe. The Saiyans are probably a more accurate depiction, but when Robert Kirkman created the Invincible comic book, he was inspired more by the Superman characters than he was by the Dragon Ball characters. A race of beings that are so naturally powerful, they go around conquering the rest of the universe, but they didn't start out that way. The Viltrumites started out as a normal humanoid race, normal power levels, nothing too special about them like any other race. Over the centuries, they dedicated themselves to just making themselves more powerful, evolving all these natural abilities that you see in present day. Constant battles, genetic breeding programs, mostly a lot of genetic breeding, until they became ultra powerful. When that started to happen, they started conquering other worlds the old fashioned way, their armies sweeping around the universe, conquering systems. At that point, their emperor was a man named Argyll. A man named Thaddeus came along and said, you know what, what if we didn't conquer the rest of the universe and subjugate all these people? He led a faction within their race to start what they call the Viltrumite Civil War over whether or not they should be a conquering race. Like there was a faction of them that wanted to be more peaceful. Thaddeus overthrew Emperor Argyll, but was then killed by Thrag, who had been bred to be the strongest member of their race up to that point. Thrag then became regent until he could locate Argyll's son and heir, because amongst their people, like, breeding is more of an obligation than it is something that they do for fun. Argyll had a son, but he was raised by his mother, and they lost track of the child when all the chaos started happening, the Viltrumite Civil War. The war itself decimated their people, and while they were still rebuilding, they were hit with another one-two punch in the form of the Scourge Virus, which was a biological weapon engineered by the Coalition of Planets as a way to fight the Viltrumites and stop them from conquering the rest of the universe. The whole reason why they created the Scourge Virus is because literally there was no weapon or other person who could stop them in the universe. Only about 37 members of their entire race survived in the entire universe, and Thrag, trying to help rebuild his people, basically told all the Viltrumites that survived, have as many children as you possibly can, and started their current method of taking over the universe by interbreeding and creating hybrids on different planets and then taking over the planet with them. That's what's happening during the events of Invincible Season 1. You're seeing that happen on Earth. It was Thrag's way of, one, replenishing their rank, so to speak, like keeping their race alive because they thought they were on the verge of dying out, so they literally just start interbreeding with the rest of the universe, but also because it really only takes one Viltrumite to conquer an entire planet, having two of them means that they will definitely conquer the planet. The whole idea during Invincible is that Mark is the rogue who decides that he doesn't want to do that. What if we didn't conquer Earth, which creates a lot of the drama of the series and a lot of the conflicts and wars that you'll see play out in future seasons. Mark versus Thrag and the rest of his people, essentially. Eventually, we find out that Nolan, Omniman, is Argyll's son. He's that missing heir that went into hiding during the Viltrumite Civil War, making Mark, invincible the character, the next heir to the throne of the Viltrum Empire. But the reason why Thrag is the main antagonist of the series is because he has his plan for the Viltrum people. We are conquerors. We're going to conquer the rest of the universe. And on the other side, you have the coalition of planets like Alan the Alien, all these other people that want to stop them from doing that. And Mark also trying to stop the Viltrumites from destroying everyone on Earth, everyone he loves. And like I said, the only thing that can really kill a Viltrumite, technically, I mean, there are things that could probably get pretty close to killing them would normally be another Viltrumite, which is why Invincible, Mark's character is so dangerous to Thrag and his people, which is why they hate that idea so much. They don't want another Viltrumite out there who would oppose them. Now there's a lot of stuff that happens in the story before Thrag becomes a big character. The way I think that they'll play out is they'll send Conquest for most of season two, and that'll be like a lot of the season, and towards the end of that, we'll see Thrag show up. Because he really doesn't become a big character until after the Conquest storyline. We got a little teaser for Conquest during Season 1. He's just another really badass member of their race. A lot of Season 2 will be Mark reckoning with the legacy of his people in the aftermath of Season 1. Like, immediately after, people are like, wait a minute, you guys were the villains the whole time? And Mark just has to wade through that while also dealing with continued threats from the Viltrum Empire like Conquest and other characters. Like, that's just the beginning. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need to get into right now without getting into spoilers too far. Depending on how many issues they cover during Season 2, I think they'll cover all of Conquest's storyline, like I said, and finish that around the finale, and then Thrag will show up towards the finale and be a much bigger character in Season 3 and beyond. Robert Kirkman did tease that he would be adding new canon material for the episodes, so there'd be stuff in the episodes that didn't appear in the comic book, just because if they only did the comic, they would burn through it in like three seasons. There are only 144 issues in the original comic book. 
It's kind of the same situation with George R. R. Martin in House of the Dragon. In the Game of Thrones universe, the House of the Dragon story that they're adapting right now only covers a little bit of book material. So when they were writing the season, George R. R. Martin had to help them create a bunch of extra canon material and just expand on that. I think the idea with the Invincible animated series is they'll go for five seasons and towards the middle of that run, like by season three, season four, that's probably when we'll see the live action Invincible movie. It'll be interesting to see how many of the characters on the animated series play their versions in live action. I think that a lot of them can do that. And I think that was part of the idea when Robert Kirkman cast those people. Marvel did that with the What If series where they tried to have as many of the movie actors play the characters as possible. Now it wasn't every single character, but a lot of the animated versions were done by the movie versions. James Gunn also just made that big DC Studios announcement about their big DC chapter one, like their DC phase one of rebooted movies. And they're also doing the same thing with their new animated series too in live action, where the movie actors play both versions of the characters, animated and live action. Like I said though, I'm not expecting a ton of thrag during season two, mostly towards the end of the season, I think. Maybe a couple teasers at the beginning of the season two. Everyone let me know in the comments too, do you want Jeffrey Dean Morgan to also play the live action version of Thrag? I feel like he'd actually do a pretty solid job. Everyone click here for that brand new DC Studios trailer video, learn about all the new movies that they're making, Superman, Batman, all the reboots, and click here for my full Invincible Season 2 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.